Okay. So I'm going to steal stuff. Yeah. Tell us how to lock up there. Sure. Um, I want to thank. Is that on? Is that? Yeah. No, it is. Um, I want to thank the organizers for another uh, good meeting here and lots and lots of ideas for, I'm sure, other people, but also for us um, in MicrobeNet. Um, uh, just wanted to say that MicrobeNet has expanded a little bit since the last time I talked in terms of the people involved, and you'll hear about the efforts of some of these people, and you've met a few of them uh, here. We've also um, extended our collaborations, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about some of the collaborations that we have um, with people outside of UC Davis, but MicrobeNet is basically uh, primarily a collaboration between people at UC Davis and Hal Levin at the Building Ecology Research Group. Um, and last year, talking about uh, MicrobeNet, I sort of gave an outline about what the schema of MicrobeNet was with, we have a set of target audiences. Um, those funded by the Sloan pro program, that is people here and some people who couldn't make it. Uh, second tier is anyone in related fields with a current or potential interest in the activities related to microbiology of the built environment. So we've been trying to reach out to building scientists or microbiologists that maybe work in food production, for example, and other areas and try and bring them into the community here and communicate with them and get some of their information and also the ever-present uh, Sloan Foundation stakeholder targets, which include people like funding agencies and people and making policy decisions, et cetera. And I also talked about how we had um, five uh, main activities at MicrobeNet, and pretty much the general categories have maintained, stayed the same. So we have this website slash hub with all sorts of information and resources there. Our primary activity, uh, although I'm not going to talk about it a lot here, is actually organizing meetings and workshops. That's where probably the most of our funding goes to, for funding people to travel to various meetings and workshops and the associated planning activities associated with them. Um, creating and curating resources, I'll tell you a little bit about new activities there. You've already heard a lot about social media from Holly Bick, who is a part of this project. I'll mention a little bit some of the new things we're doing. And I talked about this a lot last year, and you've heard a lot about this um, from us, which is teaching people how to share their information. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that here. And we, we're always open to other ideas for things in these categories and in other categories. So what the Sloan Foundation funded microbiology of the built environment community would find useful in activities that you could imagine are related to our network. We would, we would love ideas from people and to try and work with people on providing them, such as you know, new resources for the community. I can already imagine that a list of good liquid impingers um, and the information about them would be a useful thing to post uh, on MicrobeNet, for example, and you know, fungal primers or bacterial primers. We've been trying to curate that information and share it, but we don't always know what the things people are looking for are. Um, so I thought I would talk a little bit about some stuff that came primarily from last year's meeting. So at last year's meeting, there were some really great discussions and ideas that went around, and um, we, we got a lot out of that meeting in terms of new areas that we might want to emphasize or focus on a little bit more. Um, one idea that came up, and we'd still like to pursue this more, is resources that any of you have that might be useful to share to the, for, to the community. We have you know, the mechanism to post those and communicate about that and share that. So if you have a, a you know, collection of images that you want to share with people on microbes in the built environment, I don't know what all those resources are, but we're happy to work with people to share them. Um, we talked to people at last year's meeting about trying to engage more of you in uh, communicating with the outside world via guest blog posts. We've been um, moderately successful in that. We've gotten some really useful and interesting guest posts from some of the people in this room. Um, we would really like to get more, as you've probably uh, heard from us and heard from Paula. Um, and we'd really, we think that this is a very useful thing in terms of outreach and communication and interaction with the public um, and those stakeholders and the other, the two, second and third tier that we're um, working on. We also uh, 
got you know, feedback that more targeted workshops uh, would be really useful to develop. And so we've, we've done a few of these. We helped fund the workshop that was here on Chime and Vamps. Um, that was, I'm not sure when that was anymore, December or um, whenever that was at Boulder. We hosted a Chime workshop recently at UC Davis. Um, we also hosted recently, and I'll mention this a little bit more, a uh, workshop called Software Carpentry, which is teaching sort of scientists and engineers how to use Unix and the web and sort of learning, it's from the Mozilla Foundation, learning how to do um, simple sort of software activities. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about two of these other things. Um, in particular, one that we really got inspired by at the last meeting was um, to try and link studies and activities in microbiology in the built environment more to undergraduate education. And because of our role in sort of communication, we thought that this was a really useful thing because we're not funded to do sort of the, the real hardcore research that everybody else here has been talking about, but we are funded to try and communicate about the research program and communicate about the methods used in the research and try and develop resources for people that might help them in terms of education and outreach and communication. And so, again, based upon this meeting in part, we sort of got inspired about why undergraduate research projects um, in the built environment would be really useful. Um, again, a form of outreach, developing teach teaching resources to keep our lab, which is, again, not doing direct research on microbiology the built environment, but communicating about it and working with you about communicating to keep us sort of in the loop. And we figured if we were going to do this, we should try at least for these projects to generate something useful for the community, um, even if you wouldn't you know, call them the most groundbreaking research in the history of the planet. Um, so I'm going to just tell you quickly about two of these projects. We had one project which um, also came from an idea at this meeting, which is that if people are going to move more into metagenomic studies, or if people are going to do more work on cultured organisms from the built environment, it would be useful to have more reference genomes from organism microbes from the built environment. And so we figured this was a relatively easy student activity to develop. And David Coyle, who just left because they had to catch a flight, um, is the person who sort of coordinated this project. And basically, it was pretty simple. Go around the built environment with these seven undergraduate students, um, swab and culture things from that built environment, they would identify them using um, largely ribosomal RNA, PCR, and sequencing of the ribosomal RNA gene from those organisms, sequence the genome, um, assemble and annotate the genome largely using automated tools, and then we've released the data and written these very simple data publications um, in this ASM journal called Genome Announcements. And all along the way, as um, payment, penance, whatever you want to call it, the students had to blog about their experiences. We, in fact, wouldn't let them move from their DNA to getting the genome sequence until they, start, until they started to post on the lab blog. Um, and so that's there on the MicrobeNet site. There's an uh, undergraduate genome project blog. Um, five of these papers have been published already with um, undergraduates, uh, for four of them as the first author, um, and more are coming out. And we learned a lot in this process basically about the availability of bioinformatics tools that people might use, about what organisms from the built environment have been cultured and are available in culture collections and which ones have had their genome sequenced. And I think that this is a useful future area, especially again as people get more into either experimental studies with the microbes from the built environment or um, metagenomic studies. Again, you can go look. All of the students at least a few times have posted things to the blog, completely unedited, by the way. Um, some of them are pretty wacky, um, and some of the posts are actually really interesting and really good. Um, the, the sort of, we, we um, realized that after doing the undergraduate genome project that in the microbiology of the built environment community, even though my lab does a lot of genome sequencing, a lot of what's going on in this community, as you've seen at this meeting, is if you're going to do molecular characterization, is ribosomal RNA, PCR, and sequencing. And so we launched, which is still going on, another undergraduate student project, this time with six students and one um, visiting scientist and actually a high school student um, who's been doing work largely in Ken Kubo's lab at American River College and sort of testing remote participation in this uh, undergraduate project. And it's basically, we have 
aquaria that are used at the um, UC Davis teaching labs, and they were doing some refilling of these aquaria, and they, students collected samples from these aquaria, and a lot of, quote, metadata, or as uh, Hal calls it, building science data, um, uh, during the course of this. And so we've been, again, trying to learn what the resources are available in the community for both generating this type of data, collecting the metadata, and analyzing it. And um, now people are, the students are working on analysis. We were very happy to have the CHIME workshop uh, at UC Davis so all the people in my lab could actually learn how to use um, CHIME, which I think many of them are now um, able to do. And we're teaching the undergraduate students how to do that too. I don't think any of the undergrads actually went to that. Again, they are required to post to the blog and to share their experiences um, in this project. And so I think this has been... I think um, it would be great to have more undergraduate research projects associated with all, I, I know many people are doing this, but with all of the Sloan-funded programs, it's a really great way both to engage future scientists and to learn a lot about you know, what the challenging parts are of your projects. Um, we also sort of got inspired to do a little bit more public outreach, again, based upon some discussions that largely came up at last year's meeting. Um, one area that we pursued quite heavily is what you could call citizen microbiology, which is actually not just doing outreach, but engaging the public in microbiology research in some way. Some of this is actively engaging them in scientific projects. Others are sort of using the public to crowdsource, to get samples, which now that Sequencing is pretty easy and relatively cheap. One limitation for certain types of studies is going to be number of samples that you can get. So you could imagine engaging the public in uh, collecting those samples. Um, we have one project which David did a poster on. So if you saw this, you've already heard about it, which um, was largely targeted towards collecting data from the International Space Station. There was a competition from this NanoRacks organization for ideas for scientific projects on the space station. We figured what better built environment to publicize and do outreach to the community than to get some samples from the space station. Um, we wrote up a proposal with uh, Darlene Cavalier, who runs this Science for Citizens site, which is about citizen science projects, and also runs this Science Cheerleaders program, which engages um, cheerleaders for various professional sports organizations who are also scientists or engineers and doing outreach activities. And we wrote up this proposal that we thought there was no chance they would pick it. Um, and amazingly, they picked it. Um, and what we're getting, basically, that I'm most excited about originally was the astronauts are going to do some swabs of the space station for us to send back to do ribosomal RNA typing from. To try and we, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to engage the public in this project. And all of the people from NASA said that when they do projects like this, the, the public and students really like to have something of theirs sent to the space station. And I don't study the effects of microgravity on microorganisms or any of that research. So what we came up with was basically a project to go collect samples from all sorts of different events, largely sporting events because of this science cheerleader group, and use that, those events, to sort of educate the public about the microbial diversity in the world around them, and to also get some samples that may or may not be useful for microbial diversity studies, and also get samples that would be used for culturing, and David Coyle and Jenna Lang and a visiting scientist in my lab have been culturing from these swabs, and we've collected 40 or 50 organisms from the different events that we had, and um, one representative from each event is going to be sent to the space station, and we're having a playoffs for microbial growth rates. Um, kind of deranged, but um, also I think it has captivated a lot of people who go to these sites where we're doing sampling about their microbe might get sent to the space station. Um, so we're trying to think of sort of creative ways to get out to the public the excitement about microbial diversity in our built environment. And this seems to have worked um, remarkably well about uh, engaging them. Um, the events that uh, were samples were collected included, again, some basketball games, uh, Phillies game, um, some other uh, types of events. There was this, and I don't know if anybody's heard of Yuri Knight, 
but Yuri Night is a celebration every year in honor of Yuri Gagarin's space flight, and they have lots of sort of space geeks um, having parties in honor of Yuri, and we got samples from Buzz Aldrin at one of these events. Um, again, they're amazing how many people are engaged in various space-related outreach activities because people are really, really excited about things that happen in space. So again, sampling the space station and sending microbes to the space station was our leverage to do some outreach to people about talking about um, microbes in the built environment. Um, not necessarily coming directly from us, although we've been involved in some of these projects, along the lines of citizen science projects, there's also been a big movement, not just in the microbiology community, but for crowdfunding and crowdsourcing. So again, collecting samples and even getting money from the public to engage in your research. So in fact, um, David Mills, I'm sorry to say that the American Gut Project raised more money than I guess the entire wine uh, research uh, is available in the country by doing crowd sourcing. I think you could probably do crowdfunding for interesting wine and beer microbiology and probably raise much, much more money. Um, so we've been involved in a collaboration with Jack Gilbert's lab to do crowdsourcing of phone and shoe microbiomes, again, mostly as an outreach activity. There's some really exciting stuff that you've already heard a little bit about from the Wildlife of Your Homes project. And I think that this is an area to really think about and figure out if you can play in because, again, it's a really, when, when you get people involved in either collecting samples or in doing the research, it's a great way to engage them and to help guarantee the future of this field. Um, I'm not going to talk about these in detail, but we, we did do more targeted workshops to develop interactions, and we would really love, again, continued ideas about sort of, here's a gap in the field. What is an area that we might help fund to bring people together that are not currently getting together that might be useful to share information or share ideas or come up with new projects. Um, we still, as I mentioned, we would love uh, more guest blog posts and you'll hear lots more about that. Um, another one of our activities that we've, you know, we've done a lot of, and I just wanted to mention a few of these um, areas is what you could call education and information curation. So we've been trying a little more to have MicrobeMet be a central hub for information about microbiology of the built environment. We're hoping to um, at least transform the site a little bit by using some software from a group called Press Forward that's um, publicly available open source software that they're just about probably to release in its beta form that's basically used for um, making it really easy to curate and collect information from the web and share it in a useful manner uh, to the community. It's a WordPress plugin, basically, and our site is already run through WordPress, so this would be probably easy to, to adapt. Um, we have a newsletter, which I assume most people here at least got once. Whether or not they continued to receive it, I don't know. I, I'm blind to, I, I've actually purposefully, I don't ask to know who has unsubscribed or subscribed to the newsletter, but we've been doing a monthly newsletter that's about stuff on our site, as well as other things that we think are of interest going on in the microbiology, the built environment community. I talked about this last year. I want to mention again that we have this curated reference collection that's maintained through this Mendeley which, the system, which is sort of a, a social, social media aware reference collection. Um, and right now we have 684 papers in there. We curate the papers by adding tags relating to where, what environment they were from, what organism was sampled. Um, there are 102 members to this group. Some of them contribute reasonably regularly, not a lot of them, but we would love if you have other papers or if you want to share um, to, to add them to this collection. It's a good resource for anybody who's in this field or new people in this field to find a collection of papers that are related to the topic of, topics of what people are working on. Hal um, Levin is um, actually going one step further with that reference collection and has been curating um, in a little more detail the information about organisms or the built environment parameters and building a database that will be queryable for people to search through that. The Mendeley system is a little bit cumbersome for actually finding you know, tags. It's not a relational database that is easy to access. And so, so Hal's been working to make this uh, a more useful resource for everyone in the community. Um, we have an idea that relates to, uh, we, we didn't come up with this ourselves, but we saw it in a few other places, that 
Um, we're hoping to set up a little travel grant system. Um, I know people have asked about funding, us funding people to go to meetings. We didn't have a system in place and we didn't want to do sort of one-off funding of pe you know, people who contacted us by email. So we're going to set up a system for people to apply for funding to go to meetings of, of relevance. That there's going to be a cost to that. You're going to have to either write a blog post or two for us. Or um, a new thing we're starting to do is curation of Wikipedia about microbiology in the built environment. Whether you like Wikipedia or not, I actually do. It's used as sort of the number one hit for every search on almost any topic now related to biology, engineering, et cetera. And we probably should start to make the stuff there on microbiology, the built environment, better. Um, what we think we can do, in addition to the things I've been listing here, for all of you is basically we are here to help share and publicize your projects, your work, your people, um, et cetera. And you know, I've talked about some of the ways that we can help do this. We're open to other ways. But I know that not everybody likes social media, per se, and not everybody likes certain types of sort of being public about um, the things that they are doing. But if you are interested and you have, say, a new paper, we are more than willing to write blog posts about the paper, to share it with other people, to add it to the reference collection, to communicate, help you communicate to the press about it, make videos of you talking about the paper, um, et cetera. And we have a lot of different ways that we can help people communicate about their work. Um, we're open to other ideas, but again, um, you, I, I would love it if everybody here engaged in more public communication, social media, et cetera. But we'll help you if you don't want to do that. So again, if you have a paper that's coming out or a paper that has just come out or a new talk that you've given or a student that is, you know, just got a new job or anything like that, we are here to help you figure out ways to share that with a broader community, both the community here and the community outside. Um, if you want to share stuff before you've published it, we're happy to help with that too. I know that that doesn't, you know, we do that a lot and I know that doesn't make everybody comfortable. But if you want to do that, like you have a data set and you want to share it with people, we can show you how to do that and we can post information about it so other people will use it. And we've also, people know this, but if you have job postings, we're happy to post them on Microbnet. We're happy to help you advertise positions um, for your lab. And then I think this is basically the last uh, sort of real topic I want to talk about, which is another thing that came up at the meeting last year was how do we find out what are the gaps in the field of microbiology, the built environment, or gaps that, we, I mean, we've really spent time thinking about what gaps we might be able to do something about. Um, and some of these came from us, some of them, these came from the meeting not last year, and some of them have come from other people in the community. So again, I mentioned the citizen microbiology the ability to use Chime and Vamps uh, came up. That's why we, we funded, although you know, we, we didn't really organize. I think Rob Knight's group organized the workshop, but we helped support the funding for people to travel to it and some of the funding of the workshop. This software carpentry thing is really interesting. We're going to be posting more about it. You can host a software carpentry workshop at your institution. They are great about teaching people, again, how to make better use of computers and web uh, design and, and software. This genomes of isolates came up as a potentially useful area. We're continuing to discuss that with Jason Steich and um, possibly expanding this um, arena. And again, we've, we've, we've identified a few things I've heard at this meeting, actually. I've added it to the list, this you know, simulated community samples, um, especially, I think Rob was the one who suggested this, of the organisms that are from the built environment that would be useful for people doing ribosome RNA surveys or metagenomic surveys or other things would be a really useful thing to develop in the, for the community and to share with um, everybody. Um, so I didn't want to go on and on knowing I was going to be the last uh, talk here and people are probably uh, a little tired. Um, but I do want to just uh, quickly say thanks to the Sloan Foundation for sort of bringing us all together um, and for funding this arena for people directly involved in the microbe net project, like Hal, who's still here, and David and Holly, who've already left, as well as, uh, and Russell, who's all already left, as well as the variety of other people. All the undergraduates in the lab have really been great about 
testing out protocols, and we've learned a lot from them. This science cheerleader and Citizens for Science group, some of our collaborators like Jessica Green and Jack Gilbert and Dan Smith, we've, got, we've learned an enormous amount from all of you. We'd like to learn more, and we'd like to engage with you as much as you're willing. Um, and we think we, we can provide some useful, positive benefits if uh, we engage with you um, more. Um, so I think I'll just stop there. <laughs>